I'm going to cover perturbation theory um, in a number of webcasts. Um, and this is going to be the introductory stage. Um, so we'll cover the background and the basic concept, but we won't derive any of the formulas. Those will come in future webcasts. So with perturbation theory, we want to start um, with a known system. And so this is something where we can solve for the Hamiltonian. So we might write, um, for instance, h hat with a zero next to it. Um, that's to indicate that this is the known system. And that's going to act on a wave function psi n. Again, I'm going to put a zero on that. Um, and that's going to equal the energy um, e n zero, again, acting on psi n of zero. So that's our starting state. Um, now with perturbation theory, what we want to do is we want to add a small change. So we're going to add a perturbation. Um, and we will come to discuss what small means. Um, so the perturbation is going to be a change to the Hamiltonian, which I'm going to write as h hat prime. And we are going to add that to the Hamiltonian, so we now have a new Hamiltonian H, which is going to equal our original starting Hamiltonian H0 plus lambda um, H prime. And I'm letting lambda go between 0 and 1. Um, mainly it's there as just a parameter, but it helps us keep track of the perturbation um, so we can figure out what's going on. It's not actually a physical thing. So we now want to solve. Um, we want to solve for the new wave functions. Um, so we want h hat acting on psi n to equal um, e n psi n. Now the way we're going to do that is we're going to assume um, that we can write the wave function psi n. Um, as being equal to the wave function for the initial system, so that's psi n of 0, plus some small change, delta psi n. Um, and similarly, we're going to have e n, um, it will be equal to e n of 0, um, plus a small change in the energy, delta e n. We might want to think about how um, how these depend on the perturbation. So how do these changes depend? Well, Normally when we think about the effect of a small change on a system, we discover that there are changes um, which happen linearly. In other words, let's say you double the, the small change on the system, then the, the change doubles. Um, quadratically, so you double the small change and the, the effect quadruples, etc. Um, if you want to, you could think about it as saying, um, you know, if we assumed only linear changes, um, then we end up with a small problem um, because so we have a problem now why is that um, because when we act with um, the new Hamiltonian there's going to be a factor of lambda um, but then psi n is going to have a factor of lambda implicitly in this term the delta psi n um, so we're going to get a lambda squared um, we will find terms in lambda squared when we consider the effect uh, I'm sorry that shouldn't be a delta H let me just rub that out that's gone wrong. I'm just going to ignore that. When we consider h prime um, acting on delta psi, um, 
So it's clear we can't just have a linear term, we therefore need a an expansion. Um, we need a series. Uh, in powers of lambda. Now let's just look back at the form of this. You notice that we've written psi n, which is the wave function for the new Hamiltonian, um, is equal to psi n of 0, that's the wave function or the eigenstate for the old Hamiltonian, plus a small change, delta psi n. Um, it's really important to realize that all of the small changes, all of the contributions to delta psi n, are not eigenstates of any particular operator and therefore do not have any particular orthonormality um, and, and don't have any um, properties that can't be used as a basis set, or they certainly wouldn't be a good choice of a basis set. So now let's come back to the, um, the series expansion, and so we're going to write psi n um, is equal to psi n zero plus lambda psi n one. Um, now the notation here just means that psi n one is that part of the change of psi n which is proportional to lambda. Um, and we're going to have a lambda squared with a psi n two and we're going to carry on like that, so I'm going to put plus dot dot dot. Um, again, that shouldn't be there. Um, we'll assume the same thing for En, the eigenstate. We see that En is En0 plus lambda En1 plus lambda squared En2 plus dot dot dot. We're going to carry on like this. Um, we then apply the new Hamiltonian, um, which is h0 plus lambda h prime to the new wave function, psi n. Um, so we're going to write that as psi n of 0 plus lambda psi n of 1 plus dot dot dot. Um, we say that's equal to, well now we have the new energy, which is en of 0 plus lambda n, sorry, not lambda n, just lambda e n of 1, plus lambda squared e n of 2, plus dot dot dot, um, and that acts on the new wave function, which we know is psi n of 0, plus lambda psi n of 1, oops, let's close the cat, plus dot dot dot. Now that's a huge equation, um, is actually potentially infinite. Um, so what we need to do is we need to realize that as lambda is arbitrary, um, that means that we can um, equate powers of lambda on the left and on the right, because that's the only way um, that we'll have the equation being solved. on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Um, and so when you do that, you see that the zeroth order terms give you an equation which looks like h0 acting on psi n, 0 is equal to en0 psi n0. Um, that's not very surprising, that's just the original um, equation that we started with, uh, but it's reassuring that we haven't made any mistakes at this point. Um, if you consider powers in terms of a lambda 1, then we find that we have h0 acting on psi n of 1 plus um, h prime acting on psi n of 0, and you'll notice that both of those terms there have a total power of lambda to the 1. Um, and that's equal to En of 0 acting on psi n of 1 plus En 1 acting on psi n 0. And finally, for second order, which is as far as we will go and as far as most people go, because it does get particularly complicated, we see that see that that's equal to H0 psi n um, 2 plus h prime psi n 1 
and that's equal to, now there are going to be three terms, uh, we're going to have en of 0, psi n of 2, plus en of 1, psi n of 1, plus en of 2, psi n of 0. That's the basic introduction that I wanted to cover. So we've covered the concept, the idea that we're starting with a known Hamiltonian, um, we have a known set of eigenstates, and we're going to make small changes to those eigenstates. Um, we then did a very brief um, and, and rather hand-wavy interpretation of why um, we might want to expand the small changes in powers of lambda. Um, and, and that does actually happen. You, you can certainly measure changes of a perturbation. Um, and using that lambda expansion, um, we then created the basic equations of perturbation theory. Those are down at the bottom of the page here um, for the zeroth order, the first order, and the second order. What I'll cover in the next webcast um, is the derivation of the first order perturbation theory formulae. Um, and then in the webcast after that, I will cover the second order.